Okay. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. Testing, testing. Okay. Okay. Oh. Okay. Um. Welcome, Adishina. I believe you can hear me. Welcome. I think we need to wait for others to join us. Yeah, the time is um, slotted for 5 p.m. and it's just 4.57. So let's give some minutes for them to join us. If you can hear me, actually, just say hi in the chat box. Hi, Adishina. If you can hear me, just say hi in the chat box so I can know my microphone is working correctly. Okay, welcome. I think others are beginning to join us. Welcome, Aliyu. Welcome, Ulua Tobi. If you can hear me, just say hi in the chat box. Welcome, Peju. Welcome, Ifunaya. You're welcome, Aliyu. Hi, Ulua Tobi. Okay, so let's um, give some some minutes. Uh, let's wait for two or three minutes, then we can start. Actually, we won't wait for very long because we don't have time on our hands. So we shall be starting in, let's say, one minute or so. Welcome, Ifnaya. And welcome, Yomi. So Lua Lokbe, Kolawale, welcome. Lawrence Dominic, welcome. Oyin Damola, welcome. So let's wait for two minutes. Can everyone hear me clearly? All right then. So I will just like us to start. Now, today we are going to achieve a milestone and in case you don't have the link to the Figma file, I'll share the link once more so that you can work with the Figma file. And also, I'd like um, one. I'd like one of you to volunteer to be like a like a moderator, sort of, whereby if there are questions, and as I am building, if there are questions that I won't see here on this screen, you can actually send those questions to me. Um, maybe on Twitter, or maybe on um, maybe on WhatsApp, or maybe you can just um, coordinate the whole the whole question session while I am teaching. Because yeah, because actually today I would want us to get 
use 30 minutes, like complete 30 minutes from for for just building to build this to rebuild all of this once more so that everyone who was lost yesterday or everyone who was not following properly can follow can follow step by step and i won't really be explaining in depth because i have explained what containers are yesterday and i believe everyone understands the concept now so let me share my screen here um if you can see my screen just indicate that if you can see my screen all right then so like i said i would want us to rebuild this in 30 minutes just building no no too much of talking just so while i am building i want someone to to volunteer to be like a moderator to take note of questions so that when i'm done building we are going to use 10 minutes to answer those questions then we move into authentication start building the authentication which is the sign up and the login um, section then we start building the other form section where users can place the other then when we are done with that that's going to be the end of the client side the next section that we are going to work the um, admin side of the whole will be the admin side of the whole product so i want someone to volunteer to, to do that while we build all of this from scratch now to do that if you guys can hear me just say you can hear me in the chat box this is just to help and carry everyone along and also open your eyes to more techniques while building the ui or the front end of the application so okay fine since you can hear me i'll just start so i want to rebuild this now when you want to build your app you go to bubble.io forward slash home like you go to your own dashboard you just sign in click on new app let's give this app a name i would call this logistics logistics new app then i would select directory and listings here i would select external or customer facing and i would select start a business then i would click on create a new app and i'll wait for some seconds for the app to be created now you can take down a note and jot down all of the steps one after another it's going to help you if you want to rebuild this so that you can learn better when you have that note so the next thing i'll do when i have this page i'll come here and i'll select start with a blank page when i click on start with a blank page it will clean up the page for me then i'll click on close the assistant now when i click on close the assistant i'll be taken to the canvas here of bubble now this page here is the home page like this is the first page that the users will come to when they when they go to the application so we have to configure this page and for you to know that this page is the home page you can see the name of the page here it is called page hyphen index this is to let us know that this here is the index page we are currently on the index page so first things first double click on the page or right click on it and select edit when you do that upgrade the page to use the current responsive engine that's created by bubble by clicking on this upgrade responsive here when you click on it click on upgrade when you click on upgrade give it some seconds for the page to be upgraded to start using the new bubble responsive engine which is modeled after the css flexbox so okay can you guys hear me now okay all right so when that is being upgraded the next thing you do is to just close this message that shows up here when you close it then you can start building now like what we had here yesterday the first thing we needed to build was this the first thing we needed to build was this header session here that has the logo and these links and this button so first things first we need to have the logo um, from figma and to our computer so to do that i would come here i would select the logo you can see that the logo is this icon and this sender text and it is inside a frame layout 
it is it is inside a frame layout now since this is not a figma design session i won't even cover that much so i would come here now i would export this logo as an svg then i'll come back to my bubble app and what i'm going to do to build that header section is that i'll build a reusable element so i'll scroll down and on that reusable element here i'll select new reusable and i would call this my header i would give this a name i would call it my header you can call it whatever you want to call it and when i call it my header i would click on create now when i click on create the next thing i'll do is for me actually to start building that header element and to build that header element, this is what i'm going to use now before we do this let's go back to our index page now I am now I am just trying to show you how to navigate the pages. What I am building currently is a reusable element. But if you are done building, or if you want to go back to your home page, you come here, click here, and then go back to your index page. This is the page we were, we were working on. So this is the index page. Now we need to configure this index page, and what we need to do is to actually set the layout configuration. And to do that, I would right click on the page, click on Edit then i would come here and i would click on layout reason i am clicking on layout is because i want to configure the layout the layout settings of our index page now when i click on layout i would come here in front of container layout i would select columns and that's because i want the element or the children that i would place inside this layout to be arranged in a column format and arranging in column format means that the objects inside the element okay all right someone is drawing that to my attention okay so arranging this in a column format means that so, um, the object the object in the in the element will be stacked from top to bottom I hope the um, I hope the mic is the mic is okay now can everyone hear me clearly now Okay, that's fine. So now let's set that to column. When we set that to column, the next thing we would like to set is the width, like the wideness of the layout. So I would come here and I would set it to 1,200 at my own preferable dimension. And I would close this. Now we have set the layout of the index page, which is the home page. The next thing we need to do is to come here and go back to our reusable elements that we were trying to build. And remember, we called that reusable element my header. So I would come here on that reusable element here. Look at how I got here. I clicked here. Then on that reusable element here, I would see my header here. And this is it. So let's configure this to have what we have in our Figma design, in our Figma design here. So I would double click on the header element, which is this. You can see it is really small, yeah? So I would right click on it or double click on it and select edit. When I select edit, first things first, I would upgrade the element to use the new responsive engine by Bubble by clicking on upgrade responsive here. When I do that, I would wait for that to be upgraded. Susan, I think you need to re, Susan needs to refresh. Somebody needs to tell her to refresh her brother so that she can hear me better. So I would wait for this. When this reusable element has been upgraded, to use the new responsive engine, then I'll double click on it again, or right click on it and select edit, then come here now and I would want to configure its own layout settings too. Now I would click on layout here, then I'll change the container layout settings from columns, because actually I don't want the objects that I would place inside this re reusable element to be arranged from top to bottom. I want them to be arranged from the left to the right because that's how it is being arranged here you can see that in my header here i have this logo stay here and all of these items here on the right so this is not a column arrangement it is a horizontal arrangement so i'll change this from column i'll change the layout settings for the re reusable element from columns to align to parents now you can change yours to row that's fine but setting it to align to parents will make it easy for us to make it to be 
responsive. So I would select this to align to parent. When I select, select that to align to parent, I would come here and I would set the wideness for that reusable element to 1,200. And the reason is because the home page or the index page is also set to 1,200. So me setting this to 1,200 means that I want this reusable element to be as wide as the home page, which is the convention. So that's set. Now I would come here and I would reduce the height from 200 to 100 because 200 is too tall. When I when I set it to that, I would come here and I would close this, and that's okay. So I hope everyone is. I hope everyone can hear me now, as I'm proceeding. So the next thing for us to do is to come here and bring in that logo and place it here on the left. So how do we do that? The way to do that is this. I would come here since the logo is an image. Yeah, I would bring in the logo into bubble as an image and to bring in an image into bubble you will use the image tool which is this you can see where my mouse cursor is on and the way to use it is to click on it to select it when you click on it to select it you will come here in your bubble canvas and you will create an image container now to create the image container come here click hold and drag like this and that's your image container now when you click when you create the image container, it will be automatically placed here on the top left corner of the reusable element. So what we are going to do now is to configure the image container to stay where it's supposed to stay. So to do that, I would come here. This is the um, settings panel or the properties panel of the image container that I just created. As you can see, the name is image A here. You can actually change the name by clicking on image A there and I can call this logo. When you type in logo, press the enter key. So I can use this properties panel now to edit this image container and how the image or my logo will stay. So what I'll do is I'll come here now. I'll first of all, I'll click on upload here so that I can bring in my logo here. Yeah? I'll click on upload. When I click on upload, I'll bring in the, um, the frame one SVG that I have here, which is my, my image that I downloaded from Figma. I would select it and I would click on open and I would wait for bubble to load it into this header. And this is what we have. So now you can see that this looks small, yeah? So to configure it further, I would come here, click on layout. When I click on layout, I would use this um, direction settings here to position where that logo will always stay. So in my case here, I want that logo to always stay on the left side horizontally and the center vertically so i would select this arrow here this arrow here is the vertical center arrow and the left arrow horizontally so i would select that then i would make sure that this image is set to fixed width the reason is because that is the logo of our application we don't want the wideness of the logo to always change as the screen size changes because that's going to stretch the quality of the image or it's going to make the logo look bad on some devices and look good on some devices so we want that logo to always have a fixed a fixed width so i would i would keep the width selected and for the width here i would want this actually to be 64 and i would want the height to be 64 also and i'll give the maximum height 64 the minimum height 64. so when i have that set I would have this now i hope everyone is following now the next thing i'll do is this if you come here in figma you would see that the way i designed this i gave some space from the end of this page here to the logo now that space can be a padding space to the layout itself or can be a margin space to the logo remember margin is the outer space between an object and another object and padding is an inner space between an object and its content so in this case here if i am referring to this macbook pro layout here it means that this space will be a padding space because it is an inner space between this layout and its content which is this logo but if i am referring to the logo this space will be a margin space because it is an outer space between this logo and this um, layout so in this case i would want to use the margin space for that and to do that what i'll do is i would come here while this logo is still selected i would scroll down here and you'll see this margins setting here, this margin section. 
I would use this section here to set my margin property. Now, I want the margin to exist on the left side of this logo. So I would come here, I would set the margin left property. I would set it to, let's set it to 120, just like this. When I set it to 120, I would just like this to look like this. And this is what I have. So did everyone follow to that point before I proceed? Is there any questions? Are there any questions? This is just me using 30 minutes to go over everything again so that you understand better. Okay, Philip, can you tell me where you, where you got lost? Just write where you got lost in the chat box, Philip, then I'll get back to it and I'll explain later. Okay, Philip said no. Um, Lennon says he has a question. If you have any question, say it in the chat box and I'll come back to your question. I want everyone to follow clearly. So the next thing I would like to have is this section here that has these links. Now, this what we do, contact us, are links. They are not um, text. Like, you know, links are something that when you click on it, it takes you to another page. Like when you are reading a blog and you see a link, a text that says read more. That read more is not a text. It is a text link. When you click on it, it will take you to another page on that website to read more. Now, that's a link. That's what these things are. They are not text, so they are text links. So let's create a text link. Now, to create a text link in Figma, you would use the link tool to do that. The link tool. But I would want us to create this text link, these links, and this button even inside, inside a, I would, like, I would want us to create it inside a container. Now, this is my own preference. You can decide not to create the button inside the same container as these links. But for this learning purpose, I would want us to create this inside a container. Now, creating this inside a container means that we need to use a container element in Bubble. And if you come here, you would see that we have a container section here. And all of these tools here are container tools that you can use to create container elements. The most popular container element that is used in Bubble is the group element so we are going to create a group element by selecting the group tool here when we select it we will come here in our reusable element and we will create a group now click hold and drag to create the group now when you create the group here yeah, the group will not have any size that's when you create the group in this reusable element it won't have any size and that's because the group has nothing inside of it so what we are going to do first of all is to, is to set the width and the height for the group. And we are going to use the group's property panel, which will automatically show up on its own the moment you create that group like that. So we are going to set the height or the width to 400. And we are going to set the height to, let's say, 80, just like this. And as you can see here, this has been created. The group is now evident. So what we have here is this. The group is currently staying at the center and at the top of our reusable element. That's not how it is designed here for us to use. It is staying on the left, on the right here. So let's position that. To do that, I would keep the group selected still, then come here and I would, and I would click on this arrow button, which means push this group to stay on the left um, to stay on the right horizontally and at the center vertically. So I, so I would select that. And now you can see that our group is staying here, which means that we are ready to start putting these text links inside our group. But before we do that, let's rename this group from group A yeah, to um, link or text link group. And let's save that. Now, when we, when we, re rename it to text link group what do we do next the next thing we will do is to set the container layout setting of the group currently it is set to fixed and setting this to fixed is not cool at all what we have to do is click on this and set this to row let's set this to row and reason is because why i'm setting this to row is because if you look here these items are being placed horizontally and when you say 
items are placed in a row direction it means they are placed from left to right or from right to left if they are placed in a column direction it means they are placed from top to bottom or from bottom to top so we want to place these links inside this container in a row direction that's why i am setting this to row and i hope that's clear now the next property i have here is the container alignment property which is how you want the items inside the container to be aligned. Do you want all of them to always stay on the left of the container or on the right of the container or at the center? That's up to you. So what I'll do is I'll come here and I'll keep this set to left aligned. I might change this later, but for now, let's keep it to left aligned. And also, I would come here. I'll look at all of these settings. All of these settings are okay. I would, I would still keep this set to fixed width because it's not going to be important to make it um, not fixed width. So let's close this now. And it's time for us to create our text links. So I hope that's also clear to everybody. You want me to explain the margin and padding part? I would explain that. That's cool. So let's create those text links. Now use the link tool. It's just like when you want to create text in Figma, you use the text tool, right? So here you use the link tool. So I would select the link tool here. And I'll come inside this container. You'd see that when I put my mouse on the container, the red line shows to let me know that I am actually on the container. So I would create those text links inside the container. So I would click, hold, and drag like this. And you can see that the link here has been created. What is here by default is edit me. And you can see it is called link A. So I can change this if I want to change this. Let's see what's there. You see we have what we do there so i can change this to what we do from link a to what we do and i'll come here i'll change this from edit me which is the content of the link text i'll change it from edit me to what we do and that's it now you can see that the link and the color of the link is um is teal yeah somewhat like in between blue and green it's still so what i'll do is i'll change the color of that link and to change the color i'll scroll down under the appearance tab here um it is appearance that is selected i'll scroll down to this section which is the style section and we all know that style means design so i'll come to the style section here and i'll take out the style that bubble gives to the link by default and to do that i'll click on remove style when i click on remove style i'll take out the style that bubble gave to it then I can now edit it. So currently the font family is Barlow. I'll change this to Space Grotesque. So I'll change this to Space Grotesque. If that keeps happening, let's reload the app. Okay, so I'll double click on the link once more. I'll scroll down. I'll change this to space grotesque. I'll change it to space grotesque regular and I'll set this to bold. Now I'll change the color of the link to black because that's what we have in our design, right? So I'll change it to black and I'll close this. All of these other settings, I don't want them. So I won't even bother about that. Now, Somebody mentioned yesterday that they have a background color on their own link. If you have that, come here, make sure the background style here is set to none. You can see this, make sure it is set to none. If yours is not set to none, make sure it is set to none. Then let me know if that error is still there in your own case. Now, after changing this to space grotesque, I would come here. You see that there is a conditional here. Now this conditional is set by bubble by default so i would remove this condition because i don't want this condition on my link i would come here click on remove condition and i would click on appearance once more now i want us to have the other links and the next link there is the contact us link so i would double click on this link first of all and i'll duplicate it and when I duplicate it, you see that it will automatically stay on the next section on its own. So I'll change this from what we do to contact us. And that's it. Now, you can see that we have a problem. These two links are staying at the top of the container, which is our group. And that's not cool, actually. We need to change that. So first of all, let's 
double click on the container to have the property window of the container come up then let's click on layout take note i am clicking on the container now let's come here and let's see if there is a problem here over here there is no problem there is no problem at all it means that we need to check the links now so i'll double click on the links click on layout then you'd see that over here there is a vertical alignment property for the link currently it is set to top aligned now this is the reason why the link is staying at the top of the container so i would come here i would select centered and you can see that the link is now centered vertically in the container just like this now we have a problem another problem which is the fact that this may be too far from this for me it's not a problem but if that's a problem to you you can come and reduce the size by just clicking on the link clicking on layout and reducing the width from 130 let's do that let's set this to 100 you can see that it's been reduced now let's select this also and let's set the width to 100 also and it and it's been reduced if that's a problem you work that out if it's not a problem leave it now we still have another problem with the design you can see that when i select the link the text inside the link box is staying at the top of the link box that's also a problem to fix that double click on the link select the appearance here scroll down to this style section and under the style section you will see a center the text vertically option here click on it to check it when you click on it to check it the link will be aligned vertically aligned to the center vertically let's do that for this also and you can see that this is aligned vertically so always take notes the secret to this is always take note of the elements you are working on always take note of what has problem if it is the link you work on the link but if you can't know what the problem is or what has the problem then troubleshoot all of them by visiting each of the elements one after another start from the group the next element the next element to the final element you will always get the answer to your problem so if there is if there, if there are any questions at this point i would like to take them but if you are clear let me know that this is clear and i can proceed okay all right then all right then so next thing let's have this button that says login that's our login button but there is something that i would like to do at this stage that i didn't do yesterday and it is the fact that let's increase this to 500 first let's increase the width of the container to 500. now what i'd like to do here is this you all know that when you go into your regular apps and you log in you click on the login button and you log in the moment you are logged in the login button is no more showing up right what will show up will be the logout button or your profile image button or any of that and that's because when when you are logged in the app knows that yeah you have been logged in so you are not required to log in anymore so we are going to see how to do that here in bubble we are going to see how to have two buttons or two features that um when you log in what you would see there will no more be login it will be logged out or um, log out so let's create the login button first so to create the login button i would select the button element here and i would create the login button inside this container just like this now you can see the button here the text on the button is set to edit me i would set it to login then you can come here and change the name of the button from button login to login button whatever that will be okay for you now this is just the same thing as you renaming elements in your figma design file just to make sure you grab whatever you want to grab later now let's remove the style of this button because as you can see here um, bubble gives us a style which is this color and this color is not really that pretty so let's take that out let's give this a black color and the next thing I'd like for us to do is to set the corner radius, which is the roundness of the button. Currently, it's set to five. Let's set it to four because five is an odd number and not really cool. So after that, I would like to change the font family on the button from Barlow to Space Grotesque. So I would change this to Space Grotesque. And the font family of the text on the button will be changed to space grotesque and this is the size of the font here this is 14. 
I would like it to be 14. If you want yours to be 16, that's fine. Now we have a problem. The button also is staying at the top of the container. We want it to stay at the center. So I would click on layout, the layout of the button here, yeah? and I would set the vertical alignment to centered. And that's what we have there. And that's not bad at all. Now, the next thing is for us to click on conditional. Bubble automatically gives us a conditional for the button, which is a hover conditional, making sure that when the button is hovered, this color shows up. But this color is not cool at all. So let's take out the condition and not have a condition there. Now, this button, this button here is the button that will show up, that will show up when the user is not logged in. This button is the button that will show up when the user is not logged in. But we need to make this button disappear when the user is logged in. So what we are going to do is this. First of all, double click on the button for this button property panel to show up. Then click on layout. When you click on layout, make sure this is checked. This property here that says this element is visible on page load, which means that the moment a user loads this page on the website on a browser this login button will show up now after the login button shows up we need to check this user that is loading this website or this our application is the user actually logged in in the browser and decides to load it in another tab because that can be possible you can actually open a web application in two or more tabs so we need to check now this is what we are going to do it's going to be wrong if a user is logged in in one tab and logged out on another tab. That's bad development. So let's click on conditional now for this same button and let's define a condition for it. Now let's say when current user, select current user here, is logged in. Like when the current user is logged in, yeah? Just let me, let me do that again so that you can, for those of you who might be lost, you can see, say, when click on that click button there, select current user and select is logged in, yeah? Now, what do you want to happen when the user is logged in? We want to make sure that this button is not showing it, like it's not showing there. So we will select this element is visible and we will not tick this. So not ticking this means that this element won't be visible. So this statement, or this statement, which is this element is visible, is like a Boolean statement. It can be true or false. So we want it to be false. That's why we are not taking that. So this means that when a user is logged in and the user is using this app, this login button won't show up. Now, what do we want to show up? We want the logout button to show up, yeah? So we are going to create a logout button and we are going to make sure that it shows up. But before we do that, let's come here and let's select the collapse when hidden property for this login button. And collapse when hidden means that if for any reason this login button is hidden, let the space that the button is occupying be closed. Because the way web browsers work is that just because an element is not showing does not mean that the element is not occupying that space that the element should be occupying. Like you can also see that as, as, as a fact, when you go to some websites and the images are not loading, you would see that the space that the images we are occupying will still be there. So we need to collapse that space that this login button will be occupying when the button is collapsed. So let's, or when the button is hidden, sorry. So let's select this. And now let's create a logout button still inside this container. Can everyone? Yes, I put the button inside the same container, but you can actually ex you can actually decide not to. It's not a must. That's to allow. So I hope everyone is following. Can I go ahead and create the logout button? Okay, Nicholas, if your button is overlapping with the text link, uh, I would advise you to check the settings of your group container is it set to row if it's set to row then it's not supposed to overlap with the text link but if that still happens let me know the next problem so let's create a logout button so i'll duplicate this login button to create a logout button just so that i don't have any i don't spend too much time or i think to duplicate that is becoming more complex so let's just create a logout button here 
you can actually create a logout text i know more applications use a logout text to actually do that so in this case i want this application to use a logout button not a logout text so i would create this button here i would say logout yeah now i would come here i would align this to the center vertically and i would go back to appearance i'll change the color by removing this default style and i'll change the color of the button to black then i'll change the font family of the text from barlow to space grotesque just like this and i'll make it bold then you can see that the height is not the same with the login button so let's check the height we assigned to the login button the login button has a height of 40 pixels i'd like to make it 48 actually at my preferred button height so i would come here i would select this and i'll make the height of the button 48 that's the logout button yeah that's 48 and that's okay now we don't want this logout button to show when a user visits the website because it's going to be awkward when you go to an application and you have not even logged in and you are asked to log out that's not how it's supposed to be so we need to hide this button as long as the user is not logged logged in yet so when the user loads the the application we don't want this logout button to show up so make sure the logout button is what you have selected then come here on check this condition that says this element is visible on page load uncheck it when you uncheck it come here also and select collapse when hidden so that the space that it is occupying will be collapsed when the button is not showing now the next thing we will do is to come here and set a condition for it but when i click on conditional you would see that there is a condition set here by bubble by default i would remove the condition and i would click on define another condition to define a condition for this button and the condition i want to define is that when the user is logging like when the user is logged in let's uh, like when the user is logged in we want the users to be logged out yeah we, we want them to have the logout button show. So I'd say when current user is logged in, I want this logout button to be visible. So I would select this element is visible and I would check it so that it can be true, just like this. And that's it, I have created my login and logout button, but it's not functional yet. We are going to see how to make it functional in a bit. So that's me creating the login and logout button there. So I hope that was clear. I need everyone to let me know that if it is clear so that I can go ahead and create the menu icon and then make the header responsive. Reason is because the creating a header is always a problem in bubble, a responsive header and a functional header. The other parts are not, are not an issue. So everyone says it's clear. So let's proceed. Let's proceed. So now let's select the container. When I select the container, this logout button, sorry, the roundness is too much. It's set to five. I'll set it to four, just like the login button, so that it can be consistent. Now, we need a case whereby when the users come to our website and the users are viewing the application, the web application from a mobile phone here, we want them to have a menu icon like what we have here in GitHub, that when the user just click on the menu icon like this they would have this sliding from the right or from the left so that they can explore the text links on our web application now for us to do that we are going to use a plugin in bubble and for us to use that plugin first things first let's come here you can see where my mouse cursor is on it's hovering on plugins here click on plugins when you click on plugins come here click on add plugins when you click on add plugins then you type in the name of the plugin and i think i want the slide bar menu plugin. this is it and click on done now when you click on done and click on design design is the place that we were working on like this we were working on where you can actually be designing the app that you want to build. So I would click on design. When I click on design, I would come back to my reusable element now, and I would want to place that slide bar menu icon inside my reusable element. Now, I won't place it inside this group. I would place it outside the group, not inside the group. 
that's because I don't want it to stay inside the group when it is being displayed in a mobile device. I want this group to disappear when the users will be viewing the app on the mobile phone. But I want that icon to show on the mobile phone. So because of that, I won't place it inside this group. So how do we create a space on the right here for that icon? What I'll do is I'll double click on this group. I'll first of all reduce the width because it is too wide. You can see that the space is a lot here. I would click on layout. I would reduce the width first to 460. And the next thing I'll do is to scroll down and I would set a margin property for this. I would set a right margin property of 120. Now, the reason I'm setting it to 120 is because, as you can see here, this also is has a margin of 120 here. So I would set this to 120. Now, after I set it to 120, I would like to close this space a little more. So I'll set this to 440, and that's 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 better for me. So the next thing I'll close here now it is here, right here, this space that I'll place that icon. Now where is the icon we just installed, and how do we bring it into our reusable elements? This is it here under visual elements. You'd see it here at the bottom. Click on it to select it, then bring your mouse here, and then just draw click hold and drag to draw it like this and the icon will be placed inside the reuse element but the thing is this it will be placed automatically on the left top left corner of our reusable element now we need to take it to the right right so i would keep it selected you can see the name here it is called slide bar menu a you can actually change that if you want to change it but what i'll do is i'll leave it like that come here click on layout and i'll position it at the right corner horizontally and the center vertically just like this and this is it there now the the uh, icon is too close is too close to the right side so i would come here i would set the right margin to 16 just to have that little space now the width of the icon is 40 and the height is 40. i can reduce this to 32 and reduce this to 32. If that's too small for you you can make yours bigger than that but that's okay for me now let's come back here and let's click on appearance now what is going to show up like if i come here now and i and i go to the mobile view you'd see that when i click on the icon here we have so many things we have links showing up here right now in my own case what will show up when my users click on this here of course, I want what do we do or what we do and contact us to show. So I would come here. I would say what we do. Contact us. And I'll just put in login. Now, this login inside here as a link is one reason why I would advise you, like Ali said, sometimes you can decide to put your button outside the container so that you can manipulate it better but that's not going to be a problem in this course it's not part of the full functionality that we are looking for so i'll just put in login there and i'll close this now we are done with designing we are done with designing our header components or the reusable elements that will be used at the top of our website and it will be functional so before we use, I'd like to see. I would like to hear if everyone is listening to me and if everyone is following. If it is clear, just say yes in the chat box. If there is anything you want me to go back to, okay, Yomi just said yes. So what we are going to do now is we are going to take this full element that we have designed and put it on our index page, which is our home page. Now. Before we do that, we, we need to make sure that this reusable element will look good on laptops, desktops, tablets, iPads, and mobile devices. Because actually, users will view your web application from any device they have. So you need to build with that in mind. And for us to check that, come here, click on the responsive tab here. You can see where my mouse cursor is on. When you click on the responsive tab, this is where you would test how the reusable elements will look like on different devices and you can see here when i click on the responsive tab the logout button is not showing it's only the login button that is showing and that's because obviously we set that to behave like that so currently this is how our header will look like on a laptop 
a desktop and a television screen. Let's see how it's going to look like on a tablet. But before we see how it's going to look like on a tablet, is it nice for us to have this look stay here on a tablet or on a laptop screen? No, it's not because this is only supposed to show up when this um, header is being displayed on a tablet or a mobile device. So let's make sure that this is not showing up here on a laptop device or a desktop device. So to do that, I would double click on it. I would click on conditional here and I would click on define another condition. Now, what condition will I use to make sure that this icon does not show? The condition that is reachable for me is the wideness of the device. I can use the wideness of the device to test or to predict what type of device the user is using. If the device is very wide, I can say that device is a laptop or a desktop device. If it is really slim, I can say it is a mobile device. So that is why when you want to make your web page to be responsive it is the wideness that you really take into consideration because that is what you can actually use to predict the type of device the user is using so i would say when the current page when the current page width like when the current wideness of the page i would say when current page width is less than or let's say when current page width is greater than because we want to hide that, yeah, on a on a laptop device. So when current page width is greater than, let's say seven six eight, because seven six eight here is for um, mobile devices that are in landscape, that are in landscape view. So I would say when current page width is greater than seven six eight, yeah, let's hide that icon. So I would select this element is visible, and I won't check. If I check it, you see it's going to show. When I uncheck it, it will disappear. So I don't want this to show up when the current page width of the device that the user will be using will be greater than 768 pixels. So if it is greater than 768 pixels, it means it's now a tab, like it's now a mini laptop or a desktop or a laptop or a television screen. And I don't want this to show up there. So I would close this. Now, let's see how this page will look like on a tablet this is how it looks like on a tablet okay no that, there are no questions this is how it looks like on a tablet now on a tablet yeah i don't like how this looks because on a tablet this space is too much here on the right and this space is too much on the left so what do i do i need to actually say that when the user is using a device where the wideness of the device is less than or equal to 992 yeah let this space let this margin space here be reduced from 120 to let's say 32 or 64. so let's do that so i would double click on this group here which has all of these elements inside of it i'll double click on the group and i'll set the conditional for the group i would say when the current page width let's say when current page width is less than or equal to now this is the symbol for that less than or equal to 992 i would say let the right margin that was assigned to that container yeah which was actually 120 let the right margin which was 120 be reduced to 32 just like this and that's that's being affected currently you can see this is now closed in and i like that so I can come here now and do that for the same logo. I would say when the current page width is less than or equal to 992, let the left margin in this case, that was 120, be reduced to 32, just like this. So you can see that we are targeting devices. So for the for laptops and desktops, this is how it's going to look like. For tablets, it's going to look like this, and you and you can see the difference. Now for um, for mobile devices in landscape view, this is how it looks like. Now in this case, I don't want this to show up. The moment this shows up, I don't want this to show up anymore. 
I don't want this to show up anymore. So I would set a conditional for this group also. I'll double click on it and I'll set a new condition. I would say when current page width is less than, let's use less than, it's less than, let's say 800, not 768. Let's just use 800. You can use 768. So I would say when current page width is less than 800, I don't want this group to show up anymore. So I'll select this and that's going to disappear. So we need to collapse when hidden. You can see that the group here is still occupying this space. That is why it is necessary to collapse when an element is hidden. So I would come here for this group, I would select collapse when hidden like this. And you can see that it is no more showing up there. It, it's now disappeared. So make sure there is collapse when hidden on all of your elements if you want to hide it at any point in time. So this is what we have for a mobile device that will be in a landscape view. Landscape is when you are watching a movie on your on your mobile phone and you bend it um, like you bend it to stay horizontally. So this is how this website or this web application will look like at the header when you are in that view. Now let's select mobile, um, the portrait mobile device. This is how it's going to look like on a mobile device. And this doesn't look bad, actually. It doesn't look bad. To me, this is really OK. Now, if we want to edit this further, you can reduce this. Um, you can reduce this left margin for mobile devices. I can come here, set another condition, the left margin of that logo. I would say when current page width is less than 400, why I'm saying 400 is because, as you can see here, the width value for, for mobile devices is 320. The value for uh, mobile devices in landscape is 768. For tablets, it's 992 pixels. And for laptops and other bigger screens, it's 1200 and above. So I would set this to 400. And the reason I'm setting to 400 is because we have some devices these days setting theirs um, being up to that range, like Samsung devices. So I would come here, I would set the left margin which is 120 i'll set this to 16 and that's okay so that's fine so for this looks like this this like this and this like this so that's great so now we have designed our reusable element we are done with that reusable element now we can now proceed to put it in our in our home page let's go to our index page we can bring it and place it in our index page now and design the rest of that home page section. Then from there, we can start building the authentication section of our application. So let's bring in this, my header. Let's place it here. You can see it there. Now, don't worry about this showing up. This is because we are in design mode. If I preview this in the browser as an application, you would see that it's going to show up here in the browser. Let's take out, okay? Let's continue to cite. My security on, on, on my browser is just shouting a lot. So this is how it looks like. Let's take out this debug mode equal to true here from the URL and let's reload this. Now, this is how the application will look like, the header will look like in the application. If I toggle this to a mobile view, you see this is how it looks like on a mobile view, on a Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra, this is how it's going to look like. If I click on this, this will slide in just like this. So that's fine. Now let's design this section here. Now I demonstrated this section, so I won't go over it too much. Now we need to create the first container, then create this container on the left, create this on the right, and put our element inside. So let's do that. So I would come here, I would create a first container, which is the main container. I would select group, I would do all of this. I'll just create this group here. Now, this is the container. Now, I want this container to have its own settings set to row. The reason I want to set to row because I want two other containers inside to stay on the left and right, and that's a row setting. So for the width of the container, i would make sure the container does not have a fixed width. Now, take note. In this case, I don't want a fixed width anymore. So I would uncheck fixed width here. And I'll set the minimum width of the container to 300 so that the container can be squeezed to accommodate all types of devices, mobile devices and tablet devices. Now, the max width 
I'll set it to 100%, which means that this container can be stretched to 100% of any device it is being viewed on. And that's actually a good design. So the next thing I'll do here is to come here. I'll set the height to 600 at my own preference. And that's okay. Now, that container has been set. I can come here and change um, the name of the container from group A to whatever, but I won't do that. Now, for the appearance, I want to do any settings also. I'll close that. Now, it's time for us to create these other two containers, one on the left, this one here on the left, this one on the left, and this one on the right. So let's do that. So I would come here, I would select the group element also. I would create the first container on the left like this. Now, this container, I would, it's called group B. I would keep it selected, click on layout. Now, I would also ensure that this is not set fixed. Reason is because I don't want the elements to be fixed. I'll set it to column. And I'm setting it to column because, as you can see here, the elements inside the container are stacked from top to bottom. This is at the top of this, and this is at the top of this. So that is a column movement. So I'll set that to column. Then I'll then set the minimum height. I'll uncheck fixed, fixed width, I mean, not minimum height. Then I'll set the minimum width to 300 also. And I'll set the max width to 600, just like this. And 600 is because the wideness of the page is 1,200. And 1,200 divided by 2 is 600, yeah? So I'll give this 600 pixels and give the one on the right 600 pixels to make sure that the whole page is occupied properly. Now, for the width here, I'll set this to 600 because that's actually the width value I gave to this section. So that container is set. Now, let's have the next container here on the right. I would use the group tool also, and I would create another container here on the right, just like this. Now, I'll do the same thing. i would come here. I'll change this from fixed to column. Then i would also make sure that I uncheck fixed width. When I uncheck fixed width, i would set the minimum width to 300. Now I'll set the maximum width to 100 pixels. Just like this. Now, setting the maximum width to 600 pixels might be a problem. I'd like to set it to 50%. This is a more responsive design practice. The maximum width, i would set it to 50% for, the, for this group. And for the height, I'll set it to 600 pixels. Now, let's set the maximum width for this other one to 50% also. Let's say 50%. That's better. Now, when you say 50%, it will actually work with any device. If it's on the television screen, it will divide that screen into two. And it will take 50% for the left and 50% for the right. If that's confusing, how do you know when it... Con okay, Emmanuel, I'm going to get to that later. But there is a question that says, how do you know when a container is on a column or on a row? And that's based on your design that you have. That's based on your design. You can see the element here are stacked in a row. And this is also, I mean, it are stacked in a column. And this is in a column also. So it depends on that. So is everyone following? Can I proceed? Can you guys hear me? Okay, then. So let's proceed and let's have this text. Now, all these items will also be placed in a group. So I would come here. I would create a group here, which will be for that big text. Now, this group, I would keep this set to column. And I would give it a minimum width of 200 and a maximum width and a maximum width of 600. 600 pixels. 
Now, if I come here and I give it a maximum width of 100%, you'll see that it's going to only occupy 100% of this group that it is inside of. So you can set that to 100% also. Then for the height here, I'll set this to 100. And what I'm going to do next is I'll have this text that says timely package delivery. So I'll have that text. inside here and I'll create a text element for that. Timely package delivery. Now let's work on the text. Let's make it big. So I'll remove the current style for the text. I'll set the size to 48. Now make it bold. I'll make the font family to be space grotesque. And I think that's it. So now let's select the group that it is inside of. Let's increase the height of the group from 100 to 130. Let's make it 160. And for this group now that contains this text, let's scroll down and let's give it a left margin of 120 that's for the group take note of that that's for the group not for the text so i would set that to 120 then for the padding i would leave the padding value then i would set the top padding the top margin sorry to 64 let's make it more than that i'll set it to 120 also so have that stay there now for this text I would click on the layout settings of the text and I would come here, I would set the width here. Yeah? I'll set the minimum width to 200, just like this. And the maximum width, I'll keep it set to infinity so that it will just act like this. That's it. Now let's go ahead and let's design and let's have this other section under now that's going to be a text section still the same process i would create a group first now after i create the group i would set the group the layout settings to column and i would uncheck fixed width when i uncheck that i would set the minimum width to 200 then i would set the maximum width to 100 percent take note this is the maximum width for the group container i've set it to 100 percent then the height here i'll set the height to 72 and i'll come here i'll set the left margin value to 120 so that it's going to stay on the same line as this and the top padding i'll leave it set to zero no need to set no need to add any settings to that now that group is sorted now the next thing i'll do is to create that text box inside the group here yeah? so that I can have that text inside my group. So I would come here now. I would paste this inside here, like this. And that's okay, like we don't need to really work on this. I'll just click on layout. I'll make sure this is not fixed width. I'll set the minimum width to 200 and I'll set the maximum width to infinity. Just leave it set like that and that's okay. So what we need to create next is this button here, the send package button. So I would like for us to do that now. So let's create a container for that send package button. So let's create a container. Now this is the group. Let's keep it set to, to column also. And let's uncheck fixed width. Then let's set the minimum width to 200. Let's set the maximum width to 100%. And let's set the height to 72. And then let's give it a left margin value of 120. And that's sorted, yeah? So the next thing is for us to bring in the button element and let's place this here. 
So this button will be the send package button. And call yours whatever you want to call it. So I would call that send package, I'll remove the style and I'll make the button a black button. Then I would also set the roundness of the button to four, not five. And that's okay. Now let's take out this conditional on the button that bubble adds by default. And that's it. So we have this created like this. And this section is actually sorted. Now let's come back to our browser. Let's reload and let's see what we have. So you can see that this doesn't look bad. This looks okay. Let's go ahead and let's design this other section here. So let's come here now. Okay, I think there is something I need to work on. I need, I actually need this text to wrap to a new line. Now, if you need that to wrap to a new line, it means you need to select the text itself and give it a maximum width value that is not infinity. If I say let the maximum width value be, let's say four, like let's say 300, it's going to wrap like this. But in my case here, I wouldn't want that actually. I just want it to be INF, to be infinity, so that it's going to react based on the wideness of the screen it is being viewed on. So let's work with this. Now, I hope that's clear. If Yes, in the bootcamp, you will learn how to create styles in Bubble and save styles and use the styles. So also, I would want you guys, let me talk about the bootcamp for one second. You guys should, should sign up for the bootcamp. It's a product design, low code, and web design bootcamp. The low code section will focus on Bubble. We are going to connect to APIs. We are going to build real live applications that will be hosted in the web. That's why I am even charging for the bootcamp because that's going to cost some money. So for the fact that that's going to cost some money, yeah, that's why I am asking everyone to pay so that we can use that money and deploy whatever application we want to deploy. And there are some apps that we will use in the building pro will be based on subscription and from the cost of payments we will use that fund also to pay for subscription so the hosting domain all that cost won't come out of your pocket when you pay for the bootcamp the payments for the bootcamp covers all of that so rather than you looking for a startup to go and work at to get a job experience or rather than you looking for some records to put in your profile for some freelancing job when you when you are part of the bootcamp and you and you build three life projects you and put that in your in your resume and the entry level issue will no more be your own case anymore like you would you'd be easily listened to by any recruiter when you tell them i built i was the person that designed social app and i also built social app and this is the app that's the url of the app and they go there and they see that the app is a live app they they also can sign up use it and see how you built and how you designed the experience that's going to uh, that's actually going to make you surpass or go over that entry level issue the deadline for the payment of any bootcamp is the day before the bootcamp starts so i think that's june 27 or june 22nd you can actually check to confirm that so that's that's the reason why the bootcamp is actually something I'd, I'd, I'd advise anyone to come on board for because just learning and knowing it is always not enough for people who are hiring to actually hire you they mostly want you to show them that you have done this and you can do this because most of these companies are running on startup fund and these funds are not money that they are that they want to use to train workers or to gamble on people who have never had experience before that's why most of them don't hire people who don't have a real life experience of building a product that users can use the um, the bootcamp on the 30th of may is the product design bootcamp they are the ones that will design what we will build in the local track so whatever is designed in the product design bootcamp will be built in the local track so that the product designers can also say that they have worked on, they have designed live products or live apps that users can use and the companies can actually see this. And the moment, I think for you to become, um, like for you to get a job with some agencies in, in Germany, UK, all they need is show us a live project. That's it. When you, ha when you have worked on a live project one two three live projects it means that you have actually gained experience in building life projects so that's it that's just two minutes about the the camp
I hope to, to see all of you there. We will go deep into Bubble, explore the API section, how to connect payments, how to create real apps, deploy the apps. Like, let's this app. I keep talking about it because this is the most recent Bubble app that I actually built. So this app is called piggybanker.io live app. You can log in, sign up, and use it. It's connected to the Played API. You can use this actually to track your crypto wallets, um, your crypto wallet spendings, and everything happening on the wallet, and also for your traditional bank um, account. So when you track what's happening, it will be tracking everything happening, and it's going to send it to Notion or Google Sheets. So this was built completely using Bubble one line of code was not written apart from when we were trying to do some deployment and we just wanted to do some tricks some little tricks and we just had to use j little javascript to do some tricks that was not necessary actually so all of these the sign up system everything was completely built in bubble and it's a functional app it's 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 already had users so we so we so we are going to see how to build this so that Now, do we have to pay for both boot camps? Yeah, you pay for the product design boot camp, then pay for the low code boot camp. Yeah, it's a three track boot camp product design, low code, and web design. The web design is just to train people for website designs, web flow, HTML, CSS, and Figma. So when you design in Figma, you build with HTML, CSS, and build with web flow. That's the web design boot camp in a nutshell. The software we are going to use for the bootcamp will be Figma. We are going to use um, Trello. We are going to use Jira. We are going to use um, paid version of Figma. We are going to use Bubble. We are going to use a lot of software out there. So it's going to be a full work experience flow to build an app. Just something that you do if you are given a job. No, the three bootcamps are not the same time. The first one is the product design bootcamp starting on the 30th of May. After that, I think on the 27th of June, we are going to have the low code bootcamp start. Then the next bootcamp will be, um, we'll then follow, which is the web design bootcamp. So if I go to my Notion document, I can share the link to the schedules and all the topics that we will be having in, in, in the bootcamp. Now, this is the low code bootcamp here. This is the, these are all of the schedules and the time and everything. So I would share this link so that you guys can, can go through it. And I would want us to go back to building the app that's, that we are building so that we don't waste too much time. Now, this is the product design. This is the product design link here. So that's the notion you can, you can actually go through it. So let's, Let's go back to what we were building, actually, so that we don't waste time. So now let's get the let's um, let's do the next let's do this section here. So I would for that section here, what we have here in our design is an image. Now from Figma here, I would like us to download that image. This is the image, yeah. So I'd like us to download it. So I'll download it as an SVG. Take note, make sure all of your assets are SVGs so that they can look really sharp and they can have some visual quality. So when I download that, i would come here and i would create a image or i would create an image container that will contain that image. And this is the image container that I have created using the image tool. Now let's bring in the image, which is that image that we just downloaded. This is it here. So we are going to load it and wait for it to load. And when it loads, you'd see that we have this here, which is cool. So let's now, let's now work on the, let's now work on the settings of the image. So let's set the width of the image to 460. And for the height, let's not give the image a fixed, let's not give the image, let's not give the image a fixed width. Let's give it a fixed width of 300, a minimum width of 300 and a maximum width of, let's say 480 PX, look like this. Yes, then for the height, yeah, let's make the height, the minimum height to be 400, let's make it 320 
and the maximum height should be 480 just like this Should be, should be 480. Now, let's make sure that this container, the image container, is positioned properly. Now, to make sure it is positioned properly, let's come here. Let's align this to the center. Let's align the image to stay at the center there. Or let's align it to the right, actually. That was what we did yesterday. Let's align it to the right. And for the margin, the top margin, let's set it to 120. I think 120 is too much. Let's set this to 64 and let's close this. Now let's see how it looks actually. Let's test the design to see how it looks like. Okay, that's too much to the to the right, yeah? So let's double click on it and let's set this to the center. Let's see how it looks. Now, whenever you add any new and um, whenever you add any new thing to your design, you would have to reload the page. You will always have to reload the page. So this is clear, right? So this is clear. This is clear. So um, before we start the authentication, I'll I would like to take questions because um, if you are lost, you can just bring in any bring in any question and just ask me. Busola um, says I'm willing to be committed, but the comments yesterday, yeah, the comment yesterday wasn't about the lesson at all. It was it was a personal comment, so that's definitely not going to be anything that you have to worry about during the boot camp. This is not the first boot camp, not the second, not not the third. So you don't have to be skeptical. Yeah, that's cool. So if you have any questions about this so far, you can ask before we start the authentication section. Let's see how to log the user in and let's see how to start having the user place their order so that their package can be sent. So if you have any questions, you can just say that. If you don't have, then we can proceed. After building with Bubble, do you still need a domain name? Yeah you, yeah, you need a domain name of yourself. Is it possible to have complex design and animations like you have? Yeah, it's, yeah, it is possible. That's been asked by Ifani. Yeah, it is possible. Yeah, you need a domain name. How do you download image on Figma? Now, to download the image on Figma, all you have to do is select the image like I have selected here. Then come here, click on the plus sign in front of export, then select SVG, then click on export frame seven or the name of the frame you want to export. That's simple. So which other questions are there? Busola, thank you too. Um, yeah, so can I proceed? Let's work on the login and the sign up page. Can I proceed? Are you guys hearing me? Okay, Emmanuel. Sorry about that, Emmanuel. I'll get back to your question. So let's, sorry about that. Just give me a second. I'll get back to your question. So let's work on the login. Now, before users send a package, we want the users to be able to log in, yeah? And really, we want the users to log in so that we can keep track of which user is sending a package, the name of the user, the tracking code of the user, and so many other details about the user. So that's why we want the users to log in. So how do we want it to happen? When the users click on the login button here, we need to have a like we need to have a pop-up show up in front of the page asking them for their login details. Or when they click on the send package button here, we also need to have that pop-up show up asking them to log in so that they can send a package. But this button here, we will change this button from send package to enter delivery details when the user is logged in. That's going to be something we are going to do later. But for now, let's build our login 
pop-up page. Now, the login, um, the login page will be a pop-up. So to create a pop-up in Bubble, come here under containers, you'd select the pop-up tool here, and you'd create your pop-up just like this. So that's our pop-up right there. And you can see that as the pop-up is being created, there is, a, um, there is a shadow or something cast on the background there. So now let's configure our pop-up. I can change the name of the pop-up. Always do that. Call this login pop-up. Yeah? Now, um, let's work on the pop-up. First things first, let's set the settings of the pop-up layout to column because for the login page, we want to have the login fields, the input field and all of that from top to bottom, right? So that's going to work fine. Now, the width of the pop-up, let's make sure the width of the pop-up is not fixed. Let the minimum width be 420. You know, let the minimum width be... 280 that's really small so that it can be um so that it can work on a mobile phone too then the maximum width let it be 420 just like this now for the height here yeah, for the height of the pop-up let's make sure the height of the pop-up is 600 the minimum height i think that's a lot let's make it 480 and for the maximum height let's make sure the maximum height is 480 also and that's cool now the next thing we are going to work on is the top padding the top padding of the pop-up you can see the pop-up is too close to the top of the page so let's set the top padding to okay let's not set the top padding to to anything yet let's just leave that so that you don't get confused let's come to the appearance page here and let's remove the style if you want to change the color or come down here or come down here and give click on remove style and then give it a roundness of let's say it's just like this now i would want my own pop-up to be a white background pop-up i would want it to be a white background pop-up because i don't want another color to be there but you can change the color of your own pop-up yeah, you can join the bootcamp. You have no knowledge at all. It's going to be a beginner-friendly bootcamp. Now, what we are going to do is to place the logo of our company. That's how many pop-ups are, are built. So let's bring the logo of our company. Let's keep that there. Let's upload the logo. I think this is the logo. I don't know. This can be the logo there. I think that's it. So this is the logo. Yeah, that's it. So you can see that the logo is being placed. It's being placed here like this. And this isn't cool at all. So let's come here, click on layout. Let's set the let's set the height of the width of the logo to um, let's set the width. Keep it set to fixed width because it is a logo. Let's set it to let's say 48. Now for the height of the like for the height of the logo, the minimum height is 37, but the maximum height, let's set the maximum height to 64, just like this. Now let's keep the logo aligned to the center horizontally, just like this. Now the logo is too, is too close to the top. Let's get a margin top property of 24 to keep it there. Now we have that created. Now what we need to do is to create a login text. But in my case here, I won't have that login text there because that's sometimes not really necessary let's just put the login fields and for the login fields here we should have a text here like a label now this label should just say username or email address not, not username email address something like that now let's remove style for that text we all know how to edit text so i won't go over this too much then let's say space grotesque let's keep the text size to 14 then let's make it bold then let's set the let's click on layout set the width of this text box to a hundred like a hundred percent the maximum width to 100 then the minimum width to 280 just like that 
then also for the height of this text box, it's too much. Let's set it to 32, just like this. And then let's click on appearance, come here, let's center that text vertically, just like what we did before. Center it vertically, and that's okay. Now, you can see that this email address is too at the edge, like it's at the edge. So let's give this text a margin on the left and a margin on the right. Now, the margin on the left here, yeah, I would like the margin on the left to be 32 pixels and the margin on the right to be 32 pixels to have this. So this looks cool, yeah? Now, for the margin on the top, it's too close to the logo also. Let's set that. So I'll double click on the text, come here and set the top margin to 32, just like that. Now let's create an input field that the users will enter their email address. To do that, scroll down to this point. You'll see the input form section. Select the input element here so that you can create an, select the input tool there so that you can create an input element. So let's just do this. So for this input element that we have created, this is the property window. The placeholder currently is called type here. And we all know what placeholders are. It is that text that is inside the form field before you start typing. Let's take out the placeholder and let's say enter email address. Placeholder, yeah. Let's come here and let's click on remove style. And let's make sure it is set to size 14. That's because it's not really cool when the placeholder look, looks really big. And the color of the placeholder is okay to me. Let's change the font family of the placeholder to space grotesque. And let's let's work on the let's work on the input field. Now, when you create an input field, there is this property called the content format. That content format is you saying, okay, what type of data do I want users to enter into that field? In this case, I want them to enter the, like I want them to enter an email address. So I would come here, I would select this to email. Reason is so that if they don't type in a valid email address, it's going to flag it as an error. Now, let's come here and let's select this property that says this input should not be empty. This is to ensure that users must type in an email address for their action to be valid. So I hope that's clear so far. Now. The next thing we are going to work on is to design the input field to look good. Now let's come to layout here. You can see that the input field is currently aligned to the, to the left, yeah? Not to the center, but we can align this to the center like this. Then come here, take out the fixed width property. When we take it out, it's going to be like, like it's going to span across the whole pop-up. Then we can come here set the minimum width of this input element to 280 set the minimum width to 280 then set the maximum width to 100 percent just like this then for the height here yeah, we are going to work on the height and the height of this input field i would want it to be set to 48. i think this height is not bad if it is bad you can change yours so after that I would want this input field, which is too close to the edges, to start where this email address is starting. So I'll give it a left margin value of 32, give it a right margin value of 32, just like this. Then I'll give it a top margin value of 8. Or I can make that 12, just like this. Now we have our input field for the email address. Now, how do we create this again? What we are going to do next is to just keep it selected and duplicate it select it and control d it will be duplicated and you can see that it is duplicated with the same settings so you don't need to worry yourself the only thing we can do here is to come here and increase this top padding to let's say 16. have that now we are going to change the placeholder of this one here now remember this is email address yeah enter email address let's change the placeholder here to enter password now you can see that the name here has been updated to input enter password. Let me be sure everyone is still listening. Okay, then 
Now, the next thing we are going to work on is to change the content format. Remember, the content format of the first field here was email. In this case, I would want to change this to password so that it's going to be a password. Now, the next thing I would like to do is to scroll down and set the roundness to four. And I don't, I'm just having OCD, I think. I don't like the roundness having a having an odd value. So I would set this to four. And that's okay. Now we have this. Now, what do we need next? We need a button that will say log in. And we need a text that will say or sign up or create an account. Yeah. Now, before we even do the text for login, we need a forgot a forgot password text here. So let's use this to create a forgot password text. Click on it, duplicate it. When you duplicate it, double click on it. Take note of this. We want it to stay here. So double click on it after you duplicate it. Select layout. First of all, reduce the top margin to eight. Yeah. Then come here. You'd see this button here that say make first make previous make first previous next or make last i'd click on i'd click on make last because i want it to come here so when it comes here i would come here now and i would edit it to look like a forgot password text so i would click on appearance i would make it a light text then i would make this smaller i'll make it 12 then i'll change the content forgot password Just like that. And that's fine, yeah? So after the forgot password, what we are going to do next is to create the login button. So let's create that. So I would create a button. I would use the button tool here to create a button element, just like this. And I would like my button to be 48 pixels. So I would come here. The height is 48. That's cool. For the width of the button here, I would remove it from fixed width and i'll set the minimum width to 280 then i'll set the maximum width to 100 200 percent then i'll set the left padding to 32 left margin sorry and i'll set the right margin to 32 then i'll come here click on appearance and i'll take out edit me to login just like this then don't forget to change the color of the button. And this is the color here. I'll make it black, just like this. Then the roundness of the button, I'll set it to four. And this is what we have. So what do we have next or what do we need next? I think the margin space, the top margin between this and this is too much. I'll reduce this from 32 to... That's because I need some space. I'll reduce this from 32 to 24. That's okay. Now we need the or, get or, create an account. Is everyone following so far? Okay, someone is saying I, I, I forgot the password label. Let's look at that. Enter password. Forgot password label. Mm, the forgot password is always like this. You would click on it to then type in your password or to reset your password, yeah? So someone also is asking, recap the email input field from the mean and max. Okay, I'll do that. I'll do that. But for now, let's create the all text here, which will now ask you to create an account, right? So let's say all, then create an account. So for the all create an account, I would come here I would select this text and I'll duplicate it so that I can bring it just like the way I did the other one. I'll make it Then when it comes here, I would, I would align the text to the center by clicking on appearance and aligning the text to the center like this. And I'll change the content of the text to all. And for the space here, the margin here is okay. All I'm going to do is I'll need to increase the height of this uh, pop-up. But before we do that, let's make sure this is set to 14. Let's make sure this is correct. And all of this is correct. All of this is correct. So 
the minimum width and correct so that's fine now for the height of our pop-up i'll double click on the pop-up and i'll increase the height the, the maximum height to 520 and the minimum height 500 and that's it that now I'll be able to have the get started button here. <clears throat> now, in your case, you decide to use a different color for your get started button. In, but in my own case, I might decide to use any color that I like. So I'll just come here. I'll duplicate this button. I'll select the button and I'll duplicate it. Now, this duplicate, I'll come to the layout and I'll make it last like this. Or then I'll change the text there to get started. Let's use create an account. Just like this. Or create an account. Now we can change the color of that button to, to something like this. You can, you can decide to use any color of your choice though. I'll just leave it like this. And that's okay for me. So what we have here is our login pop-up that the users will see when they click on login or they click on send package. Now, the question you'd ask yourself is, what shortcut did you use? Control D, select it. Okay, someone is saying I password before enter password. Okay, the label, yeah? Cool, cool, cool. Somebody just brought that to my attention. Yeah, that's true. I think that was what um, the other um, person was bringing to my attention. Okay. Make next. Make next. Okay, previous. Okay, this is what um, this is what was brought to my attention. So I would increase the height of this to five twenty. I'll make this five and five forty. I think this is okay, and I think this space is too much. That twenty four pixel, that's also too much. Put it to 16. Let me see what we have here is 16, okay? 16, so that's okay. Then this has to be, this has to be eight. That's a lot. Let's manage the space. Okay, there is no space here even. This is eight. And this is eight. That's okay. I think this this looks better, yeah. That looks better, yeah. So um the shortcut is control D to duplicate. Yeah, the bubble app is free. So far, what I'm what I'm doing is free. Bubble app is affordable, it's free. You don't need to pay to use it. Yeah. So if this is clear, I want everyone to indicate so that we can um, do the connections, the connectivity, the contrast of the. Okay, that's that's true. The contrast is not clear, and that's that's just me not being color conscious. Now, I have actually thought of which color to use. Let's try the yellow color because we have a yellow brand there. Let's try. Let me check which color that is in Figma. This is the hex code. Let's bring that in. Um, no, not for the text. Let's try to work on the color here. I think this looks better, yeah? Yeah, this looks better, I think. So 
Can I proceed? We still have time. Yeah, we still have time. We are going to work on so on so many other things. And I think Emmanuel asked a question. Emmanuel, please, can you revisit the question? I'm sorry to have taken this long to, to respond to your question. So can I proceed? OK. The email input. Let me see that. This is the email input. This is set to email. Is there any issue with, with the email input, Mr. Philip? OK. All right. That's also a design problem. And the, for the all button, we can, we can also change that. But for now, let's leave it set to 24. While, while you're doing yours, you can actually set that. But since this is not a design class, I would want us to focus on the functionality. So maybe we can do that later. When nesting a group in the parent container, should the group be fixed or aligned? When nesting a group? When you are nesting a group, yeah, it depends on how you want the group inside the container to stay. If you want the container inside the group, like if you want a group inside a group, to stay horizontally, then you use row for the parent container. If you want the group inside the container to stay vertically, then you use column. But don't use, app, excuse me, don't use align except, don't use um, align parent except you are working on the header. That's just what I'm, that's just what I'm going to say. Someone is saying I have issues with the width. The width of the input field, what, what issues do you have? Can you be explicit? But before you do that, I would want us to see how to make this pop-up show up when the user is here. Because as you can see on our web application here, when I click on login, nothing happens. When I click on send package, nothing happens. I would want us to click on it and see how it's going to work. So for us to do that, let's come here. Let's click on our canvas for this to disappear. Yeah. Now, when it disappears, we will now create a workflow so that when the users click on login or send package, they would have to log in. Let's work on send package first. Double click on the send package button, then click on start or edit workflow. When you do that, you would see a workflow here with a condition. Take note with a condition that says when button send package is clicked. Now, what is button send package? Button send package is this button. This is the name of the button here. It's called button send package. Now, this workflow is saying when button send package is clicked, what do you want to happen here? This is just like you prototyping in Figma. So we want something to happen. What do we want to happen? Let's click here and let's select what we want to happen. We want that pop-up to show. So for that pop-up to show, you come here and hover on element actions, then select show. Now, you'd ask yourself, what do you want to show? What element do you want to be shown? We want the pop-up, which is the login pop-up, to show. So I would come here and I would select the login pop-up. This is it. I would select the login pop-up. That's what I want to show. So I'll just say, okay, let that show. And when it shows, that's what I want. So let's come here now. Let's reload our page and let's click on the send package button now. And you can see this is showing. As simple as that. Now we can come in here and type in an email address. Now, take note of something. When I type in a wrong email address, like, see that automatically Bubble lets me know that this is a wrong email address. There is an error input message, like the input becomes red, letting me know that that is a wrong email address. When I type in the at sign, and I say n.com, that error disappears because this is a valid email address. So I can say, I can type in my, my email address. I can come in here and type in a password. There's a use suggested password here. We don't want that. I'll type in any password, then I can click on login. Now we have a problem. When I hover on login, that conditional shows up. When I hover on create account, that conditional that's not beautiful shows up. So let's take it out. To take it out, click on design, then come here in the elements tree, 
which I talked about yesterday, click on login pop up here for the pop up to show out. Then let's click on this login button. Let's click on conditional, remove condition. Do that for this also, remove condition because we don't want that condition. That condition doesn't look pretty at all. Okay, I'll go over the send package workflow once more. Now, this is it. When you double click on the send package button, click on start or edit, edit workflow, then you'd come here. You can see the bubble will automatically give you this, which is when button send package is clicked, then you would come here, select what will happen. Let me delete it and do it again. I would click on this button here that says click here to add an action. And I would go to element actions because I want an action that, that will be related to an element to happen. And element is the login pop-up. So I want that login pop-up to show. I would select show here. Then what do I want to show? Which element do I want to show when the user clicks on this button? I want to show the login pop-up. That's it. That's how I did that. And so you see when I come here, you see that everything is working fine. Now, currently there is no user on this application. Like nobody has been signed up to the application. So it means that, this practically means that nobody can log in because there is no user. So what we are going to do is to make it possible for users to sign up to the application. And for users to sign up, it means the users need to, it means that the users need to click on the create account button that is there on the sign up on the login pop-up. But before we do that, let's make this login button also active. Remember, this button is inside the, the reusable element, which is called my header. So I'll go to the reusable element, double click on this button, the same workflow for this button the same workflow i would hover on element actions and show then i would select the login pop-up okay the log pop-up is not showing here and it's going to show when i make it a reusable element but for now i don't want to make it a reusable element so let's not make this a reusable element now let's wait to let's wait till we get to a very good place in the application so that you don't get confused because if I make it a reusable element, I would reset so many things. So what is going to happen now is let's make it possible for users to create an account. So what does this mean? It means that we need to create another pop-up that will be for the users to sign up. So let's come here to create a pop-up, come here, the same thing, select pop-up here, then create a pop-up just like this. Now this pop-up, I would call it sign up pop up. Just like that. And I would set the layout settings to column. I would uncheck fixed width, make the minimum width 280, maximum width. I would set the maximum width to, let's say, 400. 400 is too little. I would say 480. Just like this and that's okay now the minimum height i'll set this to 600 and i'll leave the max height to infinity now i'll come here and i'll set the i'll remove style and i'll give it a corner reduce a roundness of eight and now let's start working on this sign up this create an account form so first things first i'll bring in the logo so I would come here, I would create this image here, this image box. I would bring in the logo and I'll place that there. Then this is it. I would work on it. I would come here. I would uncheck fixed width. Okay, I would keep it set to fixed width because it's a logo. Always remember that. So I would set the width to 64. Then I would set the height, yeah, to 64. The minimum height to 64 and the maximum height to 64. Then I'll align it to stay at the center just like this. And that's okay. Then I'll give it a top margin of 24. And that's okay for me. So if that's clear, fine. If that's not clear, I'll ask you to, to ask me questions later. Now let's create a text here, which will be the create an account text. 
So I did not do the login, but I'd like the create an account to have a text like this. And let's change the font family of the create an account text to space grow text. So let's make it bold and let's leave it set to 16. Then let's align it to stay at the center vertically. Now let's come here, click on layout and let's make sure that this text does not have a fixed width. Let's set the minimum width to 280 or 290. That's still okay. Then let's set the maximum width to 100%. And when it's 100%, you see that it will be stretched from left to right. Now, let's create some space on the right and on the left. To do that, we are going to use the margin property, set this to 32, set this to 32, and that's fine. Now, we need this text to stay at the center. So click on appearance, come here and set the text to stay at the center just like this. Now, if that's, now if, if that's clear, you let me know so I can continue so that we can see how we can sign up the users and login the users that are signed in and i'll send the link to you guys so that you guys will see how it's going to work just like that now um what do we want from the users for them to be signed up to our app we want to collect their email address we want to collect their phone numbers we want to collect their passwords we want to collect their um we want to collect their passwords we want to collect their what else do we really we, we like to collect i think that's just it email phone number and password so let's work with those three now this is how bubble works bubble has a database system when you want to collect the the email address from the user it means you will store it in a in a database right and you and in the database you will store it in an email field and you will store the phone number also in the database so you need to prepare the database like you like you need to to keep it set to do that, I would come here and I would click on data. When I click on data, don't forget, don't worry about this pop up, just close it. When I click on data, I would see this data section here. First things first, I would come here, click on user privacy rules applied, and I would delete these privacy rules just for this course. Then I would come back here, click on data types. Now, what are the data? What's the data type? The data type is just like you saying, what type of card do you have? Toyota, right? Now, Toyota has, your Toyota has details like the year, the model, the color, the size and all of that, right? But the, but the data type is Toyota. The, the type of my car is Toyota. But the details of the type of my car is yellow, tall, 2011 model, all of that, yeah? Now, in, in data, data type is like you saying, the type of my car is Toyota. And in this case, Bubble gives us one default data type, which is user. So now the next question will be, what are the details of the user? Like just the same way we explain the details of our car. What are the details of the user that you will like to be reflected on this database? Now, to create that detail, those details are called fields, fields for type user. So it is here that I will create the fields or the details that I will want that user to have in my database. And by default, yeah, Bubble gives you the email field and the password field. So we don't need to create that. But we have one field that Bubble did not give to us, which is the phone number field, because we want to collect phone numbers from the users, yeah? So I would come here and I would click on create new field and I'll type in the name of the field, which is phone number. Now, when I type in phone number, I would come here, I would select field type. Now, a phone number is always a number, yeah? That's the type of data, like it's, it's always going to be a number. So I would select number and I would click on create. And that field has been added to be a detail to this user. So every user will have a phone number. Every user that we have on the application will definitely have a phone number. Now, since this is a logistics application and we want users to, like, we want users to send goods and have a tracking code that they can use or that we can use to track the, the parcel that they sent to resolve issues also. It means that each user will have a reference code or a reference number that we can use to track the goods that they send. That's how it works. So we are going to so we are going to assign a reference code or a reference number field to every user that uses our application to send goods. So that if there is a problem, like a like, like a package gets missing, all the customer care will will do is ask for your reference code. 
when the reference code is gotten from you, the user, then we can go to our database and search for that re reference code and know which package was sent, what time it was sent, which user sent it, and all of that. If the package wasn't sent, then we say there is no reference code like that in our database. So we need to create a reference code field, which is, let's click on create a new field. That's a reference code. And the reference code, let's keep it set to text. The reason is because it can be a mixture of numbers and letters. You know how reference codes are, right? So it can't just be only a number or just a text. So let's keep it set to text because text can take numbers and letters. So let's click on create. Now, the user data, the user database is correctly set. This is the user data type and the details are phone number, reference code, email, and password. Now, the detail or the data that we will ask from the user, okay, surname, and we don't, since this is, yes, they can, yeah, they can automatically sign up with Google on Bubble. That's going to be in the bootcamp. We will learn about that in the bootcamp. Now, Abdullah, since this is just a logistics application, um, for better user experience, sometimes some users won't really want to give you full details about surname, full name, and all of that. Now, for the sake of this, what's the link between Figma and Bubble? Yes, you can do everything in Figma without using Bubble. Like, I mean, in Bubble without using Figma. So I'll, I'll tell you the link. The link is for design, actually. If you want to use a consistent design, you create a good design in Bubble using auto layout. You can, be, you can test it in Figma, test it in Figma correctly, then take it and interpret it in Bubble. So for what Abdullah said, I'd like for us to give a full name field here. And this is going to be text, not surname, just say full name so that the users will enter their full name. If you ask them to type in username and um, full name and user and, and first name and surname, it's going to be difficult. So let's keep it to full name. No need for usernames. The email will serve as the username. So what's going to happen is this. Let's create the login the sign up pop up now. The first detail we will want from these users will be the their full name, yeah? So let's say full name, that's our placeholder. Sorry if I'm taking too much of your time today. Now I would set this to 14. I will keep this set to space grotesque. Now I'll keep this set to bold. Then I would come here I would take out the fixed width, keep this set to 100%, keep this set to this. That's, that's really okay. Now the height, I would set it to 28. I set it to 24. Max height, 24. And left margin, 32. Right margin, 32. And the next thing I would want for us to have is the input field. So I would create an input field. I would select the input field, come here. Then I would give it a placeholder of enter full name. Just like that. And the full name is going to be a text. So that's okay. Now I would come here, click on layout. I would set, I would uncheck fixed width, set this to 280. Then keep this set to 100%. That's the max width. Then the height here, I would set the height to 48, just like this. Then I would come here, set the left margin to 32 and the right margin to 32. And that's fine. So I would come here now. I don't have, I would remove style, set the font size to 14. That's because it's too big currently. And that's fine. So what's going to happen is, as, as we all know, we are going to duplicate this over and over. So I would have this. I'll make it last. Then I'll change. I'll, I'll give it a top margin of 8. Uh, 8 is too little. I'll give it 16. Now make this enter email. I'll say email address. Just like that. And I would have this duplicated. I'll make it last. Then I would say enter email address. If 
if I miss any steps, you can call my attention and I'll change the content format of this field to, to, of this field to email. And I'll make sure that this field is not empty. I'll make sure this also, this field is not empty. I'll select this and that's fine. Now we need to, after the email address, full name, email address, um, password, and let's ask for phone number before email address and password. So I'll, I'll make this, I'll duplicate this. I'll, let's duplicate the, let's duplicate the placeholder first. I'll say next and I'll give it eight. I'll give it 16. So let's change this to phone number. Yeah, let's come here. Now my design may not be top notch, but that's not the idea here. So let's say enter phone number. During the, during the bootcamp, we will focus more on design and functionality. But since there is no time now, we can't do that. So I'll come here, I'll set this to integer. The phone number is always an, is always an integer. Don't use US phone because Amer um, American phone is not UK phone or Nigerian phone. Just set this to integer, which is a number. And that's fine. So I'll make sure that my design is getting better. So after ad the email address, we need the password field here. Yeah? So I'll select this. I'll change that to enter. I'll change that to password. And I'll select this field. I say make last. I would say enter password. And I'll change the content, content type to password. And this is all we need from the users when they want to sign up to the to the application. Yeah. Now let's have a sign up button here. And let's have or, or then let's have already have an account. But there is no need for that since we don't have a sign up button on the home page. The users will always click on the login button first before they sign up. Yeah. There is no need for that for now. In this case, we are just trying to show you the full logic. So let's create a button here. Now, in, in some case here, yeah, some people may prefer to make this a two-step sign-up process. They would collect full name and phone number first, then email address or email first, then they would complete the sign-up later. But since this is a basic application, let's just work with this. Let's say create an account. Then let's remove style. Let's come here. Let's make it black click on layout here. First of all, let's rem remove that conditional. Click on layout here and uh, let's remove the fixed width. Then let's set this to 280 and this let's set it to 100. Then the height here, let's set it to 48 and left padding, 30, left margin 32 and right padding 32. Then let's give it a top padding of 24. That's a lot, 24. So this is it here. So if there are any questions, you let me know before I, before I make it work. Like before we make it work that the users can click login and do the rest of it. So when we are done with authentication today, I think it's going to work really, really, really well. So if there are no questions, then I'll just go ahead you can ask me the questions at the end of everything, actually. So let's go back to our login pop-up here. This is the login pop-up. This is the create account button, right? Now let's make it possible that when the users click on create account here, they would go to the sign up form. Now let's click on create account here. Then click on start or edit workflow. 
Now, what's going to happen? When the users click on this create an account button, we want that login pop-up to be hidden. Like we want to hide it because it cannot still stay there on the home page. So we need to hide it. Let's click on element actions, select hide, not show this time. Now, what do we want to hide? We want to hide the login pop-up. After we hide the login pop-up, what do we want to do? We will say what we want to do here. This time around, we want to show the sign up pop up. That's it. So let's test that and see in our, in our browser here. When I click on send package now, I'll have the login pop up come up. Now, let's say I don't have an account to log in with. I'll click on create an account. And here's this, the create an account pop up. So you can see how this works just fine. So this is it. So is that making sense so far? Can I just, can you guys give me an additional 10 minutes of your time so I can just complete this whole, this whole flow? So that's how it works. So now let's make the users to be able, let's make it possible for the users to enter their full name, enter all of this, then click on create an account. Then when they click on create an account, they can, they can be automatically logged in or we can ask them to log in again. But asking them to log in again won't be the best. So we can just log them in automatically when they create an account. So let's do that. So let's come here. Let's click on the login, the sign up pop up here. Now you see that on this sign up pop up, we have this create an account button. And this create an account button is the button the users will click on when they type in all these details. So let's click on this button because it is this button that will trigger an action on all of these details that the users will type in. So let's click on this create an account button. Come here, click on start or edit workflow. Now, when the users click on create an account, what do we want to happen? We actually want to sign the users up and save their details to our, to our database, right? To the back end. So let's come here you can see here it says when button create an account is clicked and button create an account is that create an account button when it is clicked click here and hover on account and let's select sign the user up when you when you select sign the user up bob will ask you what details do you want to use in signing the user up yeah now we want to use the email address that they have typed in we want to use the password that they have typed in. We also want to collect their phone number and their full names, but it's not, it's not displayed here. So to do that, what you do is come here, click on add all fields. You can see where my cursor is on. Click on add all fields. And you can see we have full name, phone number. For reference code, we won't ask them to type in their reference code. This is something that we will give to them on our own. So we won't type that in. We won't ask them to, to type that in. So let's see how we can collect the email that the users type in in that sign up field in that sign up form. So click here. When you click here, you would scroll down. You would see this um, section that says input enter email address. Now this input enter email address is the name of this field. This this field here. If I double click on this field, you would see that the name here is input enter full name. If I click on this, it is called input enter email address. So these are the names of this field. That's why I mentioned earlier that sometimes you can choose to name your fields or your, or your elements so that you can know them later. So I would come here. I would click on the create an account. I would go back to the workflow. So this is it here. So I would say, okay, collect, the, collect whatever the user types in in that, in that email field. What is the name of the email field? It is called input enter email address. I would say collect whatever they type in there and I would select value. Selecting value here means collect the value of whatever the user types in inside this field called input enter email address. When you collect it, save it to the email field in the bubble database that we created. So save it in our database. And if you go to the database, save it in that email field that I created under the user data type. As simple as that. For the password, I would come here, I would say input enter password and I'll select value. Then for the full name, I would say collect the whatever they type in the full name in the full name field and save it. Then for the phone number, I'll do the same thing. 
Now, for the send an email to confirm the email address of the person, we can do that later in the bootcamp because we are going to need to create a page for that, a confirmation email page. But here is saying require a password confirmation. We are also going to look at that in the bootcamp. That's also going to take some time. Now, remember the email. We don't want to remember the email, actually. What we just want to do is collect this data from the user and save it in the database so that they can always use it to sign into our application. Now, when they type in all this data, what do we want to do next after we have signed them up? The next thing we want to do is to send email. We want to send an email to the user like telling them, hey, welcome to our application. You have been signed up to our application. We offer discount services on this and that and that. That happens a lot when you sign up to an application. So I'd click on sign email or send email. Now, if yours does not show send email there, what you do is click here, come here, you see email here, then select send email here. When you click on select send email, then over here, you type in who you want to send the email to. In this case, I would want to send the email. I would click inside here, and I want to send the email to whatever email address that was typed in in that input field. So I would click on Insert Dynamic Data, and I would say, send the email to whatever was typed in in that input enter email address field. Send the email to that email address that was typed in. Now, who is the sender's name? The sender's name is the company. And I would say, sender. Now, for the CCBCC, that's not necessary. For the subject, I'll say welcome to sender. Then for the bubble, like for the body, I'll say you are welcome to our application. Now, this is where your marketing team will give you a good email address and some links actually to put in your email. Now, after that, that's sorted. You guys will test this at the end of the class. You guys will test it. I will send the link to you so that you can test it. Now, after that, after the email has been sent, I would want to set another action here. Now, the action that I would want to set here will be for the user to be logged in. Now, I would say log the user in. And I would use the email address and use the password that the user typed in then stay logged in. Then after I log the user in, I'll take the user back to the home page. Or if there is another page, I can take them there. But for this purpose, I'll take them back to the home page. And taking somebody to a page is, is navigation. So I'll hover on navigation, click on go to page, select the index page, and that's it. For the data I would send, I would like to send the current user's full name. That's it. I would get to that point later, the full name issue. I'll get to that later. Now, that's been set. So let's see what's going to happen. I would send this link to somebody. I would want somebody to log in. I want all of you to log in, actually, or sign up. Click on login. Let's see how that's going to work. Click on send package. Click on create an account. Then type in your details. Then create an account and see how you'll be logged into the application. So let's me send link. So I like one. Yes, you can use the same workflow for login and select package. Exact same workflow. So let me, you guys can try it. Let me see if it's going to work. So you guys can click on send package, then create an account, then see how it will log you in. And you'd see that the login button here will change to log out. That's what I want you guys to confirm. Okay, someone has actually logged in, has, um, signed up. That's Emmanuel.asan at Gmail. This is the database here. This is the phone number. So I would like others to, now I would like Emmanuel to confirm if he got the email address, like the welcome to um, send that email address. And I would also like you to confirm if when you, when you logged in, 
the button here changed to log out. I think we only have one person signed up. Can you guys, it changed to log out. That's great. So that's from Nicholas. But I haven't seen your detail here. I think I need to refresh my page. Okay, I have about six people signed up to the application. Philip signed up twice. Okay. I'm seeing minister for, for enjoyment. That's good. Okay. That's great. So I think everyone who signed up had the same experience. The email was sent to your account and you were and, and, and you were logged in to the application. So I hope that's, that was the case. Now, what we are going to do tomorrow is this. We are going to create the page where the users will be able to type in the details of the package they want to send so that we can also see that at the back end here. And we are going to see if we can create an admin dashboard that can be used to manage all of that. That's what's going to happen tomorrow. the phone number yeah i get what you're saying isaac yeah i do get what you're saying so i hope that was clear and also tomorrow when you are logged in this detail with this button will change from send package to enter delivery details that's what you are going to have here enter delivery details that's what's going to be there okay we have more people signed up to the application these are more people signed up here to the application and that's cool so you can see that we are currently building the logistics application gradually from ground up. And by the end of the course tomorrow, we are going to have the app up and running and we are going to generate a reference code for each other that the user places. And the reference code will be sent to the user's email and sent to us also, the owners of the application, so that we can use that for reference purposes. So that's going to be it for today. I was still left on the create account pop-up. Okay, okay. That could be an issue. Create an account pop-up. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I think that should be an issue. Now, go to page. Okay. Why didn't... It was supposed to take you to the go to page in index. Okay, log the user in. After it logs the user, send email. Okay, then let's create an action here. That's going to be a hide action. Hide the create an account pop-up. Sign up pop-up. Let's create this here and let's drag it. So after the email is sent, we hide the sign-up pop-up, log the user in, then go to page index. That's going to sort it. Yes, that's, that's because we have not configured the login button yet to be active. We are going to do that tomorrow. We just worked on the sign-up. We just worked on the sign-up field. Yeah. So thank you guys for your time today. Thank you guys for your time. I took more than I was supposed to take. 
thank you guys for your time. We are going to continue the session tomorrow. So you guys can always reach me if you have any questions and and I'll be there to respond always. Thank you guys.